Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. So do you ladies... Uh, come here often? Do I come here? I come here a bit. I'm here, uh, you know, from time to time. Do you go to school here? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So I think I had a class with you. Oh, yeah? What class? History. Maybe? Yes. I think that's what it was. <clears throat> you don't necessarily... Might not remember me, you know. I like it here. It doesn't mean because I go here, I'm a genius. I am hey. very smart. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. How you doing? You want it? What, what, uh, what class did you did you say that was? History. history. Yeah. Just history. It must have been a survey course then, huh? Yeah, it was. It was surveys. Right. You should check it out. It's a good course. It's a good, be a good class. Oh. How'd you like that course? You know, frankly. I found the class, you know, rather elementary. Elementary. Yeah. You know, I don't doubt that it was. Yeah. I, uh, I remember that class. It was, um, it was just between recess and lunch. Clark, why don't you go away? Why don't you relax? Why don't you just go away? I'm just having fun with my new friend, that's all. Wait, we could have a problem? No, 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 understand. no, there's no problem here. I was just hoping you might give me some insight into the evolution of the market economy in the southern colonies. My contention is that uh, prior to the Revolutionary War, the economic modalities, especially in the southern colonies, could most aptly be characterized as agrarian pre-capital. All right, of course that's your Hang contention. On a You're a first-year grad student. You just got finished reading some Moxian historian, Pete Garrison, probably. You're going to be convinced of that till next month when you get to James Lemon. Then you're going to be talking about how the economies of Virginia and Pennsylvania were entrepreneurial and capitalist way back in 1740. That's going to last until next year. You're going to be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood talking about, you know, the pre-revolutionary utopia and the capital-forming effects of military mobilization. As a matter of fact, I won't because Wood drastically underestimates the impact Wood of social distinctions. Wood drastically underestimates the impact of social distinctions predicated upon wealth, especially inherited wealth. You got that from Vickers. Work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, I read that too. Were you going to plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any thoughts of, of your own on this matter? Or do you, is that your thing? You come into a bar, you read some obscure passage, and then pretend you, you pawn it off as your own as your own idea just to impress some girls, embarrass my friend. See, the sad thing about a guy like you is in 50 years, you're gonna start doing some thinking on your own and you're gonna come up with the fact that there are two certainties in life. One, don't do that. And two, you dropped 150 grand on a fucking education you could have got for a dollar 50 in late charges at the public library. <laughs> yeah, but I will have a degree and you'll be serving my kids fries at a drive-through on our way to a skiing trip. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but at least I won't be unoriginal. But, I mean, if you have a problem like that, I mean, we could just step outside. We could figure it out. No, oh, man, there's no problem. It's cool. It's cool? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Fucking damn right, it's cool. How you like me now? <laughs> My boy's wicked smart. 